The thing that distinguishes slavery in Africa from Atlantic slavery is race. Europeans set in motion a system of slavery that was predicated on the idea that certain people were marked as enslavable. We've learned a great deal about the Middle Passage in the last 40 years or so. The volume of the trade involved the removal of about 12 and a half million people from the African continent. The Middle Passage was the middle leg of a voyage that starts in Europe. The first passage is from Europe to Africa. The Middle Passage is the journey from Africa to America. And then the third passage is the journey back from America to Europe. The Middle Passage could take anywhere from two to three months. Men and women were separated. Men typically were held in the lower belly of the ship. The roof, if you would, was quite low, probably about four feet high. So people couldn't stand. African men were shackled together and they were packed so closely together in a spoon-like position. And they would stay like that for pretty much the entire journey. You're talking about hundreds of people. You're at 120 degrees. It smells terrible. There are actually people dying around you, which has to be a traumatic experience for everybody on board. Maybe 10% of voyages, we know there was some attempt to rise up, to kill the crew, to try to turn the boat around, to change their destinies. Historians have a hard time capturing what the Middle Passage must have felt like for enslaved men and women. It's a voyage that is deeply disorienting. It's a voyage to a place that you can't anticipate. You don't know what's going to happen to you. I don't think we have adequate words to capture that experience. I know this ain't home, but it's where you gotta be. Shalom, I give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakak Wadash, I give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, sincere Akim, pushing this word out across the four corners of the earth. This lesson is entitled, Toss Thee Like a Ball into a Large Country. This is Isaiah 22, verse 17. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. Verse 18. He will surely violently turn and tossed thee like a ball into a large country. And how he tossed us like a ball into a large country that's going to the transatlantic slave trade, as we know today. He tossed us from our homeland, Israel, and we fled off from Roman persecution to the western parts of Africa. We settled there for a while. Then the so-called white men who are the biblical Edomites and the so-called Africans who are the biblical Hamites, they made a pact together and they rounded us up as a people and they shipped us off all across the four corners of the earth. And that's known as the transatlantic slave trade. It wasn't Africans selling Africans. It was Africans selling Israelites. You Israelites, you black people in this country, what do you say about them? You call them animals or something? I call them inferior. I call you slaves. We turn you into slaves, and when we didn't need you no more, we kick you out of Israel, and I mean out of Egypt, but out of Africa. We sold you to America, and that's where we want you to stay, and we don't want you back in Africa again. <laughs> now, you black people in this country, it's time for you to wake up and realize that this sick shit, this sick, this sick doodoo eating African does not care about you. He's not your people, he hates you, and that's why I sold you out of Africa. And do you admit that, right? Huh? You're admitting that today we on 40 sold, we, The you, white man is not a devil. We sold you to the white man. Right. You sold, if we had told you to right our now, devil, you would not be alive now, today. Now, that's you already. Now. And we were scattered across the four corners of the earth. And we are still scattered this day. And a lot of our people, they would like to know, why would the Heavenly Father do this to us as a people? This is Hosea 12 and 2. The Lord have also a controversy with Judah. Judah are the so-called Negroes. 
It also is going into the so-called West Indians, you know, Jamaicans. And it's also going into the so-called Haitians today. You know, as the kingdom of Judah. The Lord have also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings, where he recompense him. And that was the doings that we did by worshiping other gods. We was doing all type of wickedness instead of worshiping the true creator, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. And he recompense us. And that one of the ways he recompense us by sending us off and selling us to the other nations. And we are still in captivity this day. No matter where we are, North America, South America, Central America, all across the four corners of the earth, we are still prisoners under this devil, so-called white man Esau, and the other nations as well. Just another scripture proved that. This is Judges 10 and 13. Yet ye have forsaken me and serve other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Verse 14. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And that's why people did in the ancient world and still doing to this day and time. They cry unto the other gods. Like nowadays, they are crying unto the other gods by worshiping Christianity, Roman Catholicism, Rastafarian. And a lot of our people are atheists now. Pretty much they worshiping Satan. So that's why Yahweh Bashem Shah said, cry unto your other gods. You know, let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And our people was praying that God come save us. I mean, we was on those boats, all them ships, in the transatlantic slave trade. That was our tribulation that we had to face as a people because of the wrongdoings that we did. We broke the laws, statutes, and commandments according to the Heavenly Father. And you can read that in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 15th verse on down. So our people were scattered all across the four corners of the earth. Another word for scattered is to, like, separate. He separated us from our heritage. He separates from our customs. He separates from knowing his true name. And you know, he also separated us from our homeland. So this is Ezekiel 34 and 11. For thus said the Lord power, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. And the sheep is the lost 12 tribes of Israel. We are known as a sheep. A sheep is like a, a docile animal, and they follow their shepherd. Uh, in this case, our true shepherd is Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior. But he's talking to the elect of the nation of Israel. He's going to be the one that search out the hopeful elect and deliver them out of Jacob's trouble. Verse 12. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered or separated, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. So he will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered due to the transatlantic slave trade. Verse 13, and I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. So this is referencing the Israelites who consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because you have guys out there that know that they are Israelites. They like to say that the Israelites are all so-called Negroes. That's not the case. Because the so-called Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they fit those same prophecies as well. And they are under the curses also with the Negroes. And it's historical proof out there that the so-called Native Americans who are from the tribe of Gad, they were shipped off in those slave ships as well. Like the scripture saying in Romans 8 and 16, the spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. So we, we are under that same bad cloud 
which is those curses. And we fit those curses as a whole nation of 12 tribes of Israel. So there's no way of getting around it. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakah Kodash, the abundance of our apostles and elders, a great millstone. Salutations to you, sincere Akim. Hope you all were edified. Shalom.